Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to tie a Thunder and Lightning Atlantic Salmon Fly. We start with a black up-eyed salmon hook in our vise. And between behind the return loop of the hook, we will start our thread. The tag the Thunder and Lightning is constructed of oval gold tinsel. I'm using size small uni French and I tie this in on the side of the hook facing me and make your thread wraps all the way back until you're just ahead of the barb of the hook and then return forward five to six wraps and stop there. So what we've done is we created a, a foundation of, of thread which will wrap the oval gold tinsel to, to form the tag. So taking our oval gold tinsel, we make five to six wraps forward each wrap butting up against uh, the previous wrap and tie off with two to three wraps of thread. The tip of the Thunder and Lightning is yellow floss. I'm using uni floss. Bright yellow is the color. It's a single strand floss which is quite convenient for for the construction of, of, of the tip and leaving a tag end of material extending past the bend of the hook. We tie this material in on the top of the hook shank. Returning your thread until you're about to the point of the hook. Now take your floss and wrap back towards the tag until you meet with the tag and then you return forward slightly over wrapping your, your wraps of floss. and tie off. So this tag end of floss that's still remaining here, what I use that for is to pull forward and tie down. It makes a, a very secure tip. It, it prevents the, the floss from, from fraying down over the, the tag when, when fishing. Okay, now the tail of the, of the Thunder and Lightning is a typically golden pheasant crest. Um, it's quite typical in uh, many Atlantic salmon fly patterns, but you can substitute that, especially if, if you're fishing with the fly, with, uh, with yellow saddle hackle fibers. So I have some saddle hackle here. I'll select a feather. And I'll take some barbs of the hackle for my tail. And when I install my tail, I want to let it extend back past the bend of the hook. And the reason for that is if you have a, a short taking salmon uh, if you have the tail extended back past the bend quite often they'll just come up and, and nip at the tail uh, so if you have it flush with the bend of the hook it increases your chances that he will the salmon will grab the hook as opposed to just the, the tail material now having said that of course there are some uh, salmon fly patterns uh, with quite a prominent tail in terms of length uh, Alley shrimp is, is one of those, but generally speaking on Atlantic salmon wet flies, you want the tail 
fibers to extend no further back than, than the bend of the hook. The butt is constructed of ostrich hurl. So just ahead, just where the tip finished, you will make the wraps of the ostrich hurl. Usually three wraps is sufficient to build up enough of a, a butt. And then we have to get ourselves another section of oval gold tinsel which is which will form the the ribs after the body has been uh, tied and we'll tie this oval gold tinsel in again on the side of the hook that's that's facing yourself and then wrap all the way forward until you return to that return loop Okay, so now we have a nice smooth foundation uh, created for the body of the fly. And when I had tied in the oval tinsel, uh, both for the, for the tag and as well as for the ribs, I mentioned that I'm tying this on the side of the hook that's facing myself. And the reason for that is the salmon hook has a return loop eye. I don't know if you can see that in, in the video. Uh, but that return loop creates a gap between the material that's coming back in the return loop and the shank of the hook. Uh, so you want to fill in that gap to create a, a smooth transition between the shank of the hook and the return loop of the eye when you're creating your body. And filling that gap in with the material you're tying in, such as the, the tinsel for the tag and the ribs, helps with making that smooth transition. So for the body we're going to use black floss. Again I'm using uni floss. It's single strand but for the body I'm going to double it up. It just helps more quickly build up a body as a double strand versus a single strand. One thing you can do before wrapping the floss for your body is lay down some lacquer on that thread base. It will just help make a more secure fly, more secure body on the fly. And return back to the eye of the hook until you've got to a point where you just have enough bare hook remaining to, to construct the head of the fly. And finally, in the construction of the body, we have to wrap our oval gold tinsel to make the rib. And for the rib, standard number of wraps is five. Cut off those ends. Now up to this point I've been using uh, white thread to construct the fly. And the purpose of using the white thread is when you have light colored floss, such as the yellow that we used here in the tip, uh, when, uh, when the material gets wet, if you had a dark colored thread base underneath there, that would show through the lighter colored floss. 
So using the white thread uh, prevents that from happening. So because the fly has a black head, we're going to now switch over to black thread. So just a half hitch and a whip finish to finish off the white thread. And we switch to black. Okay. The next step is to install the throat, which is blue over orange saddle hackle. What I do in installing my throat is I flip my hook over. It just helps in, in getting the hackle centered over the bottom of the hook. If the hook is flipped over, you more easily see what you're doing. So I'll take some orange rooster saddle hackle, find myself a reasonable feather. So here we go. What what you want for a throat is uh, is some webbiness into in the in the hackle. Okay, that's good. I just get a little bit more from the other side. Okay, so here we go. I have my orange rooster saddle hackle, which I tie in. Just three wraps to secure it is sufficient for now. And next is blue. And just a little more. There we go. You even up those tips. That looks good. And we lay that on top of the orange. One, two, three, four. I put four wraps in just to secure it. Cut off the ends. And now we turn the fly back over. Okay, for the wing of the Thunder Lightning, well, at least the, the hair wing version, um, typically what you see is, is brown squirrel tail being used. Another variation of the Thunder and Lightning is the white Thunder and Lightning which would use white calf tail uh, but for this one we're going to use uh, black or dark brown moose hair it's uh, quite standard on atlantic salmon flies used in newfoundland and that's what we'll use for this one so i have a piece of moose hair here you cut off just enough that's necessary for the wing And what you have to do is right now, obviously the tips, the hair, it's all all different lengths. And if you use that for for a wing, it would create some uh, quite an untidy looking fly. So we're going to even up the tips of that hair by utilizing a, a hair stacker. So I'm just here. So you take you insert the butt ends into the bottom of the, the hair stacker. Tap on the palm of your hand. Then open back up. And now you have your tips of the hair are, are nice and even. It's a little too much hair there. Okay, so to install the wing, it's going to come back to meet up with the end of the tail. So that looks like a good length there. We'll cut off to the length we need. And in the butt ends of that hair, we're going to put some lacquer 
and then once tied down with thread that's going to create a wing that will not easily pull out and I like to take my wings in two portions so first half then the second half and then tie down to create the head of the fly that creates quite a durable wing that will not pull out and build up the head and have a nice shape there we go Okay, well, that's good. And we have hitch and then whip finish. Finally, to finish off the fly, we'll put a coat of lacquer on the head. You can put multiple coats on the head. The more coats you put there, of course, the glossier shinier the head will be uh, it's just important to let the previous coat dry before you put additional coats on anywhere from two to three coats is good so there you have it it's the thunder and lightning hair wing atlantic salmon fly uh, tied with with moose hair if you like this video, don't forget to uh, click the like button, also to subscribe, to follow my other videos. And for any of the f feather material I used in this video today, check out feathercraftshop.com. Thanks for watching.